show. The, the time that I have here with Dr. Judy Wood, even with all the preparation that I've done in reading her book cover to cover, uh, taking a look at all the images, even in this presentation, there have been things that I've seen in these visual images and, and hearing uh, her representation of those things that have absolutely blown me away. And uh, we have, uh, in this multimedia presentation, many different ways that you'll be able to see this same information. But, of course, I need to remind everybody that you can obtain a copy of the text, and I'm calling it a textbook, that has the visual images contained in it. A textbook uh, called Where Did the Towers Go? You can find that at the ptantillyshow.com. Click on the tab where it says Where Did the Towers Go? You can purchase a copy of this textbook. And I have also... Um, said uh, after reading it from cover to cover it literally has changed my life and the way i look at things uh, and especially with how i've uh, had conversations with dr judy wood but i'm telling everyone if you purchase this book and if you're not absolutely convinced this is uh as ashley jones has said it's uh, the most important book uh, since the bible period if you don't agree or haven't seen something contained in that book you send that undamaged book back to me, I'll refund 100% of your money, including the shipping costs, period. But Dr. Wood, uh, without uh, holding you up any further, let's proceed with the presentation. So here we are at one story below ground level in the mall, the mall area that's right below building four. And I'd shown where the people were walking along. And in this picture, you can see on the left where it says innovation luggage and down here, it's Hallmark Cards. Yeah, it's punched in a little bit down at the end. But, uh, yeah, you see the drop lights, you know, come loose from the ceilings, but it's not like the place has caved in and just been destroyed. And how far underground was that picture? Just one level down? So, sorry. Um, this is, uh, yes, just one story. If you go up one story, you're, you're walking ground along level. ground level. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So here we are on the green topographical map of the debris field, and the indentations represent debris that has fallen, which is, you know, relatively Oh, no, small. no, you make an assumption there. Oh, okay. We have holes in the ground. We have indentations. That's all we know. We don't know how they got there. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll deprogram you some more. Yes, please. <laughs> but here we are looking. We're going to go down a couple stories below that mall and look at the loading docks. And that, that level. And we have look, purple oh, area yeah. on the right, right? Is that purple? And then the yep. green area on the left in Section 4, okay? Right. They color-coded it so that when the delivery trucks came in, they would know where to find the store they needed to make the delivery to. Okay. And it's purple under Building 5 and green under Building 4. Now, we're going to be looking down in the direction I've shown the arrow, looking from the, the purple area down to the green area. And down at the very end of the green area, you'll see a wall where the truck has to turn right and to go out of the part loading dock. Right. That area where he turns to go out is under where Building 4 is missing. Okay. So if people are thinking that, that Tower 2 landed on Building 4, you got something coming here. <laughs> Look at that. Right. And there's an audio that plays this. Look, see down at the very end... Uh, the green wall that's under where building four is missing. Wow. Going down to the parking garage. We're in quite deep. These are the first pictures of search crews underneath the World Trade Center desperately looking for survivors. Going down here. Uh, that wasn't a busted up parking garage. That wasn't even a full parking garage. That to me sounded like an empty parking garage. That nice echo. Someone down there, 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 there. Right. And this area right here looks pristine, virtually uh, untouched, correct? Yeah, it's, it's more dirt on the, on the floor, but, right. you know, the lights are still working. Sure. And this is right above that same area. And this is the yeah, picture with the New York uh, Giants uh, helmet, the girl with the, um, uh, the yeah. face mask, and, and she's standing in the debris field. She's looking down like, what the heck is that? Wow. She's got this curious look on her face. And you can see stairwell B in the distance, that little clump of, of debris in the middle. Right. That's, that's all that was left of it, and that's where those guys walked out of. Wow. Mm -hmm. And there's this, the corner facade, but you see these holes in the ground. Now, I notice that that surface area is dirt. Uh, the buildings weren't made out of dirt. Below her feet, is that correct? Yeah, and all around on there is dirt. Mm -hmm. And 
you look at pictures from the next day and the day after, and and that's where the dirt appeared. Hmm. This picture was taken like uh, well, it was it's labeled the 13th. It may have been taken the 12th, but it could be the 13th um, of September. It's not on 9/11. It's like the day or the second day after. But buildings don't collapse into a pile of dirt. That's right. And looking at the pictures more carefully, it looks like they came in wheelbarrows and dumped them in you know clumps in some of the pictures. But yep. there's something else interesting. I've got a clip of Rudy Giuliani the next morning, the morning of the 12th, bragging, almost like he you know was going to have it all cleaned up by the end of the day. Here's what we he were says. able to move 120 dump trucks out of the city last night, which will give you a sense of the work that was done overnight. Uh, so some of the debris has already been removed. More of it is being removed, and it will be done by barge all throughout the day today. Yeah, like, like he's going to be finishing my nightfall. Wow. Uh, 120 dump trucks. Mm -hmm. If you're busy trying to rescue people, you're going to be dislodging the pile and if you move stuff. So what are the 120 dump trucks for? Mm -hmm. um, could they have been bringing dirt in then? I do have photographs of dirt coming in as well as dirt going out. And I even witnessed it, it as recently as uh, 2007 and 2008. 2007, they're still bringing in dirt, piles of dirt. You know, they stir it around, truck it back out. Wow. Okay, here's uh, that ambulance picture again. If there was over a million tons of debris that had collapsed or slammed to the ground, where is it? This is at ground level. And we know it's at ground level because there's the ambulance at ground level. And the, the ambulance's um, uh, tires are on, on the ground at ground level, correct? Y yeah. So even the, the, the level of dust, okay, that settled, wasn't the dust wasn't even that deep. Right. Dust went up. A lot of it did. Wow. Gone with the wind. There may have been one layer of wheat checks, you know, in certain places on the ground. Okay. But uh, here's what uh, James McGlynn said. He said, we just kept telling them we're in B stairwell when they were trapped in there. I remember everyone had the same exasperation I do. We must have told them a hundred times, B stairwell on the second floor, third floor, fourth floor, north tower, B stairwell. Third, fourth floor. Where are you? Stairwell B, fourth floor, third floor. And and finally they heard, um, where's stairwell B? I mean, where's the, the North Tower? Hmm. And that was when they uh, were getting rescued, those guys who were trapped in there. There's right. stairwell B. And people were saying, where's the North Tower? Yeah, there's their buddies they're, they're radioing to. Right. Uh, w wouldn't you wonder if those voices were from the beyond? Yes. Hmm. Here's the video of, of them getting rescued. Hundreds more firemen were now arriving at the disaster area, but Captain J. Jonas's Mayday messages were still not getting through. Trapped down in the remains of Stairway B, there was nothing else Jay could do. We realized we can't get ourselves out. And uh, that's a big mental leap for a fireman to take. Because we're so used to being the people who are going in to rescue someone. Now, the roles are reversed and you realize you're helpless yourself. But with the survivors buried alive beneath a debris field that extended over 16 acres, it seemed they would need another miracle to save them. It was midday on 9-11 and in the chaos and confusion, Captain J. Jonas's Mayday messages were still not being received. The fireman had no idea there was a pocket of survivors nearby. Then Jay again tries to make radio contact. Unexpectedly, this time, his call is picked up. One of the officers coordinating rescue operations is Chief Nick Visconti. He responds to Jay Jonas's Mayday call. transmission from Nick Visconti. I heard operations post to ladder six. Operations post to ladder six. This is Jay, where are you? Okay, good four. North Tower, Bill B is in boy on the second floor. But the location Jay gave was unbelievable to them. 
The North Tower no longer existed. They asked for his location again. He asked me that a couple times, and one time he asked me that. Somebody else got on the radio and said, Where's the North Tower? I remember somebody saying that. Where's the North Tower on the Jeez. radio? And I said, oh, shit. I says, this... It's not good. Mm -hmm. I'll say. So, here's uh, where B Stairwell was. Okay, and now what we're looking at is the uh, the overhead representation with the with the holes in uh, uh, in the uh, debris field. Um, we're looking over the World Financial Center, which mm -hmm. is in the west side of West Street, right? Uh, back at what was left of uh, the complex. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to point out is that smooth dome of the World Financial Center two building. Nothing on it. Not even dinged. Not not cloppered. And. Note the building is a 44-story building. The towers were a 110-story building, right across the street. Yet nothing clobbered it. Not even any dust on it. It may have uh, rained. It rained on the 14th. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this picture may have been taken right after that. Okay. So it could have just been rinsed off that way. But there's still, you know, there's no um, wheat checks or so forth on the top of that uh, ledge. No debris, right? But something else peculiar here, if you notice, uh, is bare sidewalk across the street from where Building 7 oh, stood. Oh, no kidding. No kidding. And that's the post office there. Right. It was a three lanes of traffic there. And you're telling me a 47-story building fell down and didn't spill across, fully across that three-lane street? It didn't cover the sidewalk completely. Mm. Fascinating. So now we're looking at another picture, uh, another angle. Uh, it shows uh, actually an eight-story building, World Trade Center 6 and 5. Go ahead. And in the foreground, you see uh, there's not much left of Building 1, just the, the north wall, which is about the same height as the eight-story building. So you have eight stories of outer wall, the north tower. Where are the other 102 stories? And those wheat checks are, the wall. is aluminum facade, is that correct, or is that... Uh... It's a steel facade, uh, outer columns with okay. aluminum covering. Mm -hmm. And so the aluminum is just a decorative kind of thing. Mm. But the steel structure, right. where is it? And just north of it, in the far upper left-hand part of that picture, mm -hmm. is the remains of Building 7. Okay. But uh, you see where the bathtub wall was, but... We haven't seen any hint of, you know, over a million tons of debris here. A million and a quarter, yes. Now, the bathtub, this important part. <coughs> Sorry. If, uh, you know, these buildings slammed to the ground, Manhattan would have been flooded. So here's this, the situation. You have the towers being built. 70 feet below the water table on bedrock and they they made kind of a dike around it and you can see from the picture on the left right at water level this is before the world financial center was built there so you see the towers are right there at, at water level and below of course and the rails um the path trade uh, that's this subway that goes underneath the hudson river was built before 1910 i don't know exactly what year 1908 1909, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. It's over 100 years old. And it survived. They must have made stuff better back then. I guess so. But you can see the, the picture on the right, how the bathtub... Whoops. That uh, jumped a little bit. Let's see if we can get the... Uh, At what level were those, were those rails? I'm sorry to, to interrupt. Oh, they're, they, it ended up on the basement. Uh, the bottom of the basement on that bedrock is mm -hmm. where the path train station was and where the, the rails ended up. But they went even deeper than that, going under the Hudson. Mm -hmm. And at first they were worried that water had, you know, that maybe leak because water was down in the tunnels. Mm -hmm. But, heck, the, the whole ground level was open with it raining and fire hoses and so forth. And so the water had to go somewhere. And once they pumped it out, it stayed dry. It was just the water drainage that came from you know, raining in the hole. Right. And so here's a map of the building. 
uh, out in the Hudson. And you can see, I'll try to run my mouse down here. And we're looking at a block um, diagram representation uh, overhead, uh, World Trade Center 1, 2, 6, 5, 4. Go ahead. Yeah, kind of a map. And you can see where the original shoreline was mm -hmm. along this dashed blue line. Right. And then the bathtub was built out in the Hudson. That's that red uh, enclosure around. You can see where the path train uh, subway station was. Right. Uh, let's see. So they basically had to push the river out that way by building that bathtub. Right. Well, they actually they just built the towers in the Hudson and built this dike around them. Mm -hmm. And then they put the uh, path trains inside that big bathtub. They rerouted it in what 1971 okay and uh afterwards well here's during the the construction and you can see way down here in the bottom of the basement there and then this is ground level so that's seven stories down and this is when they had the old path train station which was about the fourth story okay down. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to we're going to go to uh, our last break here. We're looking at a, a picture. What year was this taken in approximately, Dr. Judy? This is about 1970. 1970. OK, uh, Dr. Judy Wood is with us. We're going to be back right after this break and we're going to wrap up in this final 20 minute segment. This is unbelievable. Now you and your family and friends can enjoy the cleanest. Mm. OK. Most all right. Now, uh, if we could, um, just just to let you know, what what uh, time do you have on your clock close by, Doctor Judy? Uh, let's see. It's uh, well, I've got two different times. That that clock can't be right. Uh, okay. my, on the computer, it's three thirty nine. Okay, so thirty nine. Uh, uh, we will uh, when we come back in this uh, this final segment here. Uh, we will go to uh, fifty five minutes. Okay. 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 So the fifty five minute mark. So just gauge that because I, I want to I want to end uh, you know powerfully. Uh, just give me the, the last thirty seconds to carry us uh, into uh, into tomorrow. Uh, but if, okay. as we approach the fifty five minute mark, just say you know this is what we've covered up to this point. Uh, we've looked at evidence. We we've stayed away from making any generalizations or assumptions, right? And then this yep. is what we can yep, expect that's, to do that's tomorrow. Hard to uh, hard to do is just take it's very out hard. This, yeah. People ought to get ahead of, of it. I mean, that's human nature, I think. Right. And and I've tried to extract the stuff that I've had running around inside of my head to not talk about that, but to just look at everything that's right. being presented. Right. Right. Good. But you know, you just being, being an observer um, and listening to the people or, or seeing the, the reaction here in the chat room <laughs> that the building, um, I think it was, was it two? had with the dome on top no oh, dense yeah yes no dense no and no debris on the the uh i guess i would call it a balcony that went that went around it the top floor that went around yeah the, right the dome there's there's no debris there nothing I mean, hit I, it I, and I, fell or slid or anything like that nothing even no. uh, touched it yeah as and i say even if it had, stab wounds above the 18th floor right, right. so even if it had rained with the amount of dust or debris that would have that should have fallen on that building would have been like um would have been it would have been like a, a hard you know mold on top of it you know what i mean it would have well, the, the dust it would have encased it still yeah the dust could have rinsed off but or maybe they cleaned it off afterwards but uh the the chunks solid chunks would have still been there but yes. as you'll see that there the solid chunks didn't really go above the 18th floor now, now, without, uh, I mean, you, you can describe this in a certain way, but this this was my assumption that I made. That was a 44-story building. Yeah. So at the 44-story level, everything from that point above was just complete and total dust, dustified material. But the remaining balance of the the debris field seems to be down lower to the ground, correct? Where you get the wheat checks right. or maybe a few stories. Right. It didn't go all the way up 44 stories. Right. We'll see that later. That um, okay. if you turn everything to dust above the twentieth story, mm -hmm. and drop just the bottom twenty stories, right. you get about the same seismic um, impact that was recorded. Mm. Mm. Okay. And uh, Daniel, are you there?
Yeah. Hey, Daniel, just uh, a quick fade coming back in. I want to use every second here uh, and give it to Dr. Judy, okay? No problem. Okay, good deal. Awesome. Okay, so we have... Um, coming up on 43.25. We have uh, about a minute here. Um, somebody just made an observation, mm -hmm. Dr. Wood. It says, look how insignificant the outer wall is in relation to the rest of the building in the picture currently posted. All the matter was in the steel core and each floor's decking. What does that mean to you? Uh, the other oh, here we go. Here we go. Hold on a second. We got 10 seconds. Oh, so we have one. Come listen to our new show, The Region 10 Report, airing Friday nights at 11 p.m. Central, brought to you by Suzanne Posel of OccupyCorporatism.com. You're listening to The Pete Santilli Show. One small step for man, one giant leap towards the truth. Okay, we're back. Real quick, we're going to preserve every moment here with Dr. Judy Wood. Uh, the book, Where Did the Towers Go? We're looking at uh, evidence from 9-11. Uh, back to you, Dr. Judy. Okay. Uh, the, what was left of the uh, building? You know, After it was cleaned out, here's the cleaned out bathtub. Okay, we're looking at, uh, that's right, it's a completely cleared, all the debris is cleared. And you can see where the footprint of where uh, the two towers is stood, WTC1, WTC2. Right. And across the street, where, which you can't see here, is the World Financial System. But in the NIST meeting in the fall of, uh, or I guess it was in December 2006, they are meeting to talk about uh, ideas about what happened to Building 7. And so... There were fires there, they thought there were fires, and someone suggested maybe a piping system that went underneath the bathtub over to Building 7, which was on the right, just off the picture, that maybe it was damaged from the collapse of the, of the towers. And you'll hear in the voice of Sham Sunder, uh, the guy who headed up the, the committee, that the, it, the seismic signal was of no significance to damage anything in the underground. Let's hear it. Uh, I thought the seismic data you were going to look at was data associated with the collapse of the tower, particularly the tube. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, we did look. Uh, we, I mean, obviously, we have looked at all of the seismic signals. Um, the the main focus of that was to establish the timing of the various events, uh, and and if any, uh, uh, again, using it also to see if there were any um, any. Uh, events that we could not explain other than it being the collapse of the, of the towers and, and the uh, World Trade Center 7. Uh, the, the signals strength due to the collapse of the towers were not of any magnitude that was seismically significant from an earthquake design standpoint or from the design or failure of a structural component or of, uh, I would say, a piping system that might be used in a structure. So. Uh, there wasn't anything that gave us uh, pause in terms of that being a significant seismic event uh, to have ruptured the pipeline. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, underground doesn't look damaged. Wow. And there's the bathtub. While intact, we're looking at the, um, uh, we're down inside the, the bathtub, correct? Looking at the outer wall. Right. In the foreground, you see the smooth concrete. That's the, the bottom of where Tower 1 had, had stood. Mm -hmm. And over in the right, you can see the color coding of the different stories of the parking garage under Building seven, uh, right. 6. So that hole in Building 6 did not go below ground. Wow. Or not significantly below ground. That's right. Uh, this is So that's... The area right below building six so so much for the theory that the uh buildings just uh pulverized and went into the ground right right P period yes mm -hmm. and that's usually an escape from you know i had somebody who was who was telling me oh well it's just out of sight of this picture the debris is and then i show them a picture to the right and they go well the debris is then it's just out of sight back to the left well are they moving around a million tons of debris each time they take a picture <laughs> that's funny so if there's a seismic <laughs> impact, that's the third most important thing. Um, if, you know, the seismic charts would have reflected that, and that didn't happen. Yes. And one of the first responders, Michael Ober, said, I don't remember 
the sound of the building hitting the ground. Mm -hmm. Someone told me that it was measured on the Richter scale. I don't know how true that is. If the building's hitting the ground that hard, how do I not remember the sound of it? Yeah, clanging metal, nothing like that. And there was a fellow who worked on the 27th floor of the North Tower who contacted me after my book came out and explained that he knew he wasn't going to get any stuff done that day because it was just all chaos. So he grabbed up his stuff and headed home for the day. He came down from Building 1, went past Building 2, looked like the fires were about out, but the building looked in good shape. It was just you know, chaos all around there. And then he went down to the ferry terminal I have, to I go have over a, to Staten a, Island. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. And uh, he, as he was waiting at the ferry terminal, he said these buildings in the foreground are tall enough that you couldn't see past them to see the towers. And then the, some idiot came up, well, at least they thought he was an idiot, who said Tower 2 just collapsed. And they looked at him like he was nuts because, well, they just passed Tower 2 and it was in good health. Fires were about out. They didn't hear anything crash the ground. They didn't feel the ground shake. Wow. And wow. when they got on the ferry and they went out in the middle of the Hudson River, then they could see past that building in the foreground and saw there was only one tower standing. Mm. Wow. Now, I have a question. The floors, uh, the concrete in that building, how much concrete was in that building? I, I take it that the floors were made... Uh, with concrete slabs, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It was actually their um, metal floor pan pans with uh, a thin layer, I think, like four inches of lightweight concrete in it, just so you had something to walk on for the high heel shoes and so forth. Sure. But there, it was uh, lightweight concrete in metal floor pans. Right. Those metal so floor pans. Out surface. Were any metal floor? Well, the, the sheer number of concrete slabs and metal floor floor uh, pans in that entire building and them not making any noise is remarkable. Right. It should have sounded like it was raining dump trucks. Right. Yeah, you know, the 20 ton dump trucks empty. You know, it's just oh. with stuff in them. Okay, go ahead. We have six minutes here. Ah. So uh, here's a picture of like ankle deep dust several blocks away. And uh, perhaps this is why you didn't hear it hit the ground because it came down like snowflakes. Right. Just dust. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the seismic chart. There was an earthquake earlier that year, in January, in Midtown Manhattan. And this shows the seismic signal for that in the bottom part. And the top part, it shows uh, the demise of Tower 1's uh, seismic signal. They're very different in nature. Mm. And so, But we know that that bedrock can transmit seismic signals because it did for the earthquake. <clears throat> sure. But why is, notice the, the lines are more space in yeah. the uh, Tower 1 demise. And the other one, they're very closely spaced, so it's a different frequency. Also, it has a P wave, a primary wave, mm -hmm. and an S wave, a secondary wave mm -hmm. arrival shown for the earthquake. But there was no S wave or P wave for the uh, uh, Tower 1's demise. Wow. And here there's three kinds of signals. There's P wave, which is like a rubber band snapping. S wave, motion like a jump rope, where the motion is transverse to the direction of travel. And then there's surface waves, like if you get up off your mattress, your, your uh, mattress springs back because mm -hmm. it doesn't have that weight on it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's a surface wave. It turns out during the demise of the towers, there was only a surface wave. No S waves or P waves. Now, the P wave, the primary wave, and this wave, secondary wave, they travel because they're different. They travel at different speeds through the Earth. Mm -hmm. They travel through the Earth. And you can tell how far away the epicenter is because they travel at different speeds. So you see that by the lead time of the P wave over the S wave, you can tell where the epicenter is. Meaning nothing was really going on below the surface. Well, uh, here is uh, for the chart for Tower 1. You see there's no S wave or P wave. That means the signal did not travel through the Earth. You're right. You, you've got that one. Wow. And there was only the surface wave. And it only lasted eight seconds. Now, you see, this, I call it the snout that leads up to the big signal. You know, that's where the, the lead of the P wave. You don't see that in this chart. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the eight second, uh, you know, that the ground shook for, uh, Houston, we have a problem because it would take nine and a half seconds, approximately, to drop a bowling ball off the roof and have it hit the pavement. Oh, my goodness. That, that's the one that really got me.
Mm -hmm. So the ground only shook for eight seconds. That's evidence that the building did not fall. And, and by the way, the 9.22 seconds to drop a bowling ball, uh, that exactly. calculation is done in a vacuum without any air resistance, correct? Right. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's why I'm rounding up to nine and a half seconds approximately. But still, it's a long way away from eight seconds. Right. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, this in, this uh, next chart was right after the demise of Tower 2. Mm -hmm. And then um, the signal from Tower 1, which is a 2.3, should have mm -hmm. been a whole lot more. And you know that the seismic signal was, you know, were being transmitted to the recording station because of all the quarry blasts recorded all day. Right. But notice on the very bottom line, you have an earthquake from the Fox Islands that was recorded, but nothing for Building 7. It was a non-seismic event. Building 7 was non-seismic? Yeah, there's nothing uh, significant, right. really. Right. It, it was a 0 0.6 on the Richter scale. Mm. It didn't have an S wave or P wave either. And I compare it with the Kingdom uh, because it's, you know, lots of data available for the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. But remember, it takes nine and a half seconds from the tower to uh, drop bowling ball to the ground. Mm -hmm. That's right. But the top of the Seattle Kingdom to the ground would be, for dropping a bowling ball, would be about four seconds or a little bit less. Okay. Let's, uh, let's hold this on. Get, we, get the ground sh shook longer. I'd like to get final commentary from you. We're going to be wrapping up here uh, this, this segment. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll come back. I'll, I'll have final comments here for tomorrow's episode. But uh, what can we expect uh, to be uh, uh, seeing uh, tomorrow from this point, looking at the seismic waves? Well, it, instead of you know doing little dabs all the way through, I've chosen to to do you know each step um, systematically because the most important things are the groundwork. Remember to figure out what happened and why we need to know what happened. And what we've covered here is if the buildings had collapsed to the ground, you'd see a pile of stuff there, which we didn't see. The Manhattan would have been flooded, which didn't happen, and the seismic chart would reflect it, which it didn't. The seismic chart implies that the buildings did not slam to the ground. Yep. Thank you. You'd have a signal going through the earth. Thank you. And and these are these are facts, correct, Dr. Judy? This isn't yes. speculation. We haven't made anything up. These are this is factual information. Yes. You you have filed all of these pictures and documents with the federal court system, correct? Or most of them, yes. Most of them. Okay. Is there anybody else that has conducted a thorough investigation like this and has filed their documentation with the federal court system? Nope, and uh, no one's even uh, done a comprehensive forensic investigation except for okay. me, including La NIST. Ladies and gentlemen, here on the Pete Santilli Show, you're getting all of the evidence, not just a portion of it that suits any documentary or anything like that. We're looking at this evidence. For those of you that have been asking for a 9-11 investigation, that investigation has been conducted by Dr. Judy Wood. Tomorrow, she'll be back for more. We'll see you then. Thank you. Do you experience anxiety on a daily basis? Do you struggle? All righty. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you.